My name is Hudi Vega, and I work for the City of San Antonio uh, Metropolitan Health District. I'm not a, an academic, but um, my day-to-day -day is managing a program that we are doing community organizing in at-risk inner city neighborhoods. So we really kind of see firsthand from certain neighborhoods um, what's happening on the ground, what people are struggling with. The health department doesn't really take an official stance on the effects of gentrification as far as related to public health, but the, the Center for Disease Control does. And so they know nationally um, that there are effects that on at-risk or vulnerable communities um, can have disastrous effects, um, such as dealing with access to healthy food, access to the public space and um, recreation, and also access to transportation, affordable housing. Um, when really looking at it through kind of a health equity lens, we know that in San Antonio we have tremendous health disparities. Of course, diabetes being one of our largest, but asthma, diabetes, um, obesity, and all of this is really compounded when people have to be displaced and moved into another neighborhood. They aren't able to access the same, also with mental health. Mental health is a huge issue here in our inner city neighborhoods, and when people lose their, effectively lose their support system and are already vulnerable, um, there's just tremendous effects on people's health and on their ability to afford um, healthy food and medication and also access health care. So, um, I guess I didn't really come very prepared today. I'm sorry, I was going to put up here. Um, but basically, we, we really would like, in working with community, um, what we hear a lot is that they are the last informed, they are the last asked. Um, and this is, of course, historical um, in that in San Antonio, like in most of the nation, the rights of the impoverished and the rights of those who are at risk are really considered last in making policy decisions. So when we really try to go into these neighborhoods and organize, it's been it's been tremendously difficult at first because people have never been asked. They are so used to having decisions made for them by the city, by academics, um, that there's not even a language and how to kind of invent a language as to what do you really want? What would you like to see? And of course, like everyone, everyone just wants a decent life to be able to afford to live, to live a healthy and a healthy life with dignity for their family and the community. And so, I know from our perspective, we would really just like to see um, health be taken into consideration when making these policy decisions to displace people, um, and also remind the politicians in the room that there are tremendous costs at risk as far as health is concerned in particular. In San Antonio, we have possibly one of the highest amputation, diabetic amputation rates. Um, if you can imagine an amputee, and this is very personal for me because my mother's an amputee, but imagine an amputee who's on a fixed income, who is not able, is going to effectively lose their house, or they can't afford, they can't afford their taxes. This has tremendous, tremendous impact on their whole family, not just that person, but their caretakers, if their caretakers have children. Um, and the costs are just tremendous. And without that support system and without that um, that access to care, um, that person might have another amputation and may get on dialysis. I mean, the health costs are tremendous. And uh, we have started at the health department kind of have started to really kind of quantify all those health costs, but it's just so compounded by by displacing vulnerable people. So um, I would ask that you know, we consider that as well when we're trying to think about the future of our city and the um, economic solvency of our city because we're being crippled in, in terms of health costs.